Hello and welcome to our video behind the scenes of Car Dealer Live 2024. Now this is our event for the motor trade. We've got a packed day of sessions today. I've got two headline interviews, one with Peter Vardy, the franchise dealer boss, and one with Peter Wardell, the used car supermarket boss. I've got a franchise dealer panel, I've got a luxury dealer panel, I've got an independent dealer panel. To be honest with you, the day is absolutely packed. And this video will give you a little look behind the scenes. Peter Vardy was our first headline interview of the day. He used the opportunity to quash rumours about his business and explain the changes he's made recently to his portfolio. So we decided to move out of volume cars, move into premium cars, more so going forward where the margins are protected. And let's be honest, the wealthier are getting wealthier. So their ability to afford an electric car and another car uh, is there, isn't it? So that part of the market we think is particularly safe on the dealership side. Where we see growth um, an opportunity and excitement really as well as our other business as well. So we've got car finance business as well, a bit like car finance 24 seven, where our business is called car money. So it's about the second or third largest car finance broker in the UK now. And we've gone overseas with that. So of the 197 countries in the world, over a hundred of them finance cars uh, when somebody wants to buy one. So we think it's a good opportunity to take the business model in the UK and going overseas with that. And Peter Vardy went on to explain how hard it has been to make those changes. When you do um, see people leave the business because you can't continue to give them a job because your business change, as a Christian as well, that's a really difficult thing to do. So we haven't made the decisions lightly because when you're valuing people, which is really what you're doing in, in a family business, a Christian family business, you're trying to value people. Obviously letting them go is very difficult emotionally. So we have let some people go through the changes or seen them go and work for other companies. So. That's been a very difficult thing to do. Our afternoon sessions were headlined by used car supermarket boss Peter Wardell, who spoke about Kazoo's news this week that it was transitioning to an online marketplace. He said he's already made an offer to buy their stock. Phoned in the first minute I heard, did and offered about the three and a half thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. I, I bet. did. In fact, we're buying them now at the moment. I've got six buyers going through the whole stock list for them now to buy them. <laughs> Our franchise dealer panel spoke about the battle that could erupt this year if Chinese challenger brands decide to cut their prices. Wessex Garages MD Chris Wiseman had this to say. At the moment the Chinese brands are well placed to come in with a very competitive pricing message. Uh, I don't think they're, they are at the moment because they're pricing to a basket of cars that currently exist in the UK. That model changes and they want to hit the switch and talk about volume. I think the danger is the, uh, the OEMs in this country will not have the margins in the cars to be able to compete with it. And then you're talking about the tariff situation and whether that comes in. So uh, I think the words you used is it could be a bloodbath this year on EVs. I think that's exactly what it's going to be. Mm. The franchise dealers also talked about the FCA investigation into historical finance commissions. Robin Luscombe said he was concentrated on finding a new income stream. I don't think anybody knows what it's going to mean to us financially insofar as fines or repaying commissions or whatever at the moment. Hopefully that's taken on by the finance companies. Um, we can't do anything about that, so that'll happen. Going forward, what we can do something about um, is replacing the income that we're going to lose, uh, which I think is the only thing they have to worry about. Catherine Fares from Headline Partners Auto Trader spoke about used car pricing as part of their keynote research session. Oh, there's definitely a, dis a disconnect. There's definitely a time lag between what we've seen play out in trade and then how that's flowed through to retail. We are seeing more st stable retail pricing at the moment. We just saw fastest ever speed of sale in February, really strong engagement audience data on our platform. So there's no reason that retail prices shouldn't continue to stabilise and that we shouldn't overall get back to a much more stable pricing environment. Catherine also spoke about how online used car sales models like Kazoo's could be killed off in 2024. I think 2024 is probably going to be remembered as the year that um, omnichannel retailing killed online retailing, actually, um, in that the best retailers, retailers building a scalable retailing business, I think 
it's now been proven that you need a physical presence, you need a physical forecourt to be a successful retailer operating at scale. There are a small segment of consumers that want to buy online and will buy end-to-end -end online, but that segment is actually quite a bit smaller today than it was a few years ago. And a few years ago, everyone was talking about online retailing being the future. We've been talking for some time about omnichannel retailing being the future. And for us, that means combining the, de the best digital journeys with a brilliant forecourt experience. I asked our luxury car dealer panel, which featured Tom Giaconelli from Romans, Brett Ward from HR Owen, and Tom Hartley, their thoughts on electric cars. It's safe to say Tom Hartley isn't a fan. Sorry, guys, I hate electric cars. Uh, it's just not for me. Uh, I, don't, I don't actually think I make a statement. I don't think in... Uh, 2330 will be definitely finished in the way of electric cars, my personal opinion. Uh, the people who I deal with have always dealt with them all my life, like to smell the petrol, like to hear the engine, like to hear the noise. They're enthusiasts, the, re the real raw uh, supercar buyers or performance car buyers. So for me, I'm not an electric person. We also asked the panel about how they price some of the most expensive supercars in the world. And for the two Toms, it's mostly about gut feeling instincts and insights um and that that is what it comes down to we we keep some of our own data on on stuff as there's obviously auction prices you wouldn't go off them too much but it can give you an idea you know a lot of the cars we sell there are some on the market so you can or and there's some that we've sold so we look at what we sold but then it is gut feel because all the specs are, can be very different um, timing can be very different. A car might have been great news last year, not so much this year. So it is quite a lot of gut feel. Um, you know, we'll discuss it amongst our team, anything that we're a little bit unsure on. Um, but you have to take some risks. You do, sometimes you set the market price. Yeah, it's quite simple. Gut feeling and experience is far better than research and training. And uh, gut feeling is the key word. And experience, uh, knowing the marketplace. I, I can detect, you know, we can detect in the showroom, account call, it demands sellers, and we can really create our own uh, gut feeling with the value of any car that we buy and sell. Estelle Miller, co-founder of EV Experts, talks about the punishing drops in used electric car values on the independent dealer panel. No, I mean, not only do we not expect it when we first established, but you know, even in the early part of uh, last year, I don't think it was predicted by CAP or anyone. I mean, Elon Musk coming in and dropping £8,000 overnight. I mean, I know that he's done that before, so maybe we should have expected it, but um, I think it was um, harder and more brutal than, than anyone predicted. And manufacturer representatives from Stellantis, BYD and NEO talked about the support they'd like to see to boost EV demand. They were speaking the day after the budget, which had failed to offer any incentives to electric car buyers whatsoever. Objectives are there for a reason, and we fully support um, the objectives in terms of the 2035 plan. Um, but I think we, as, as you mentioned earlier, need a bit more support in that as well. So manufacturers can produce the vehicles um, to meet the, the, the requirements, but we also need additional support from, from government, from infrastructure providers. They need targets too, to put the infrastructure in place, um, to build that demand. We can, we can produce the vehicles, but we need the, the incentives, that private retail customer. Um, it exists today for company car. We need um, the, the VAT um, for charging, sort of harmonized across mm. private households and, uh, and public charging to make it fair. Um, and if these things come in, uh, then I think it's going to be an easier route to get there, definitely. But will it happen exactly on that date? I don't know, but I think it will happen at some point. Mm -hmm. Dale Wyatt, Suzuki GB boss, also said electric car sales are a challenge. Yeah, we've seen big interest in hybrid, the hybrid brand. Um, hybrid is appealing to a petrol or a diesel owner at the moment. EVs is a real challenge. For a manufacturer, you've got a loss-making product that isn't universally fit for purpose because of capability and infrastructure. You've got to sell to a retail customer that's showing very little interest in it, which is a bit of a challenge. It's difficult to get excited about losing money <laughs> and selling a product to a customer who doesn't want to buy it. 
and there are big changes on the horizon in the used car market, according to Cox Automotive's research. The firm was just one of the partners to publish exclusive research for this event, all of which will be covered on the car dealer website in the coming weeks. The firm's Phil Nothard talked about how diesel car sales will soon dwindle. We're predicting that the diesel fuel share will drop to about 3% by 2028. Wow, okay. We know that it's already on the decline. We yeah. believe it will start to plateau because there are some manufacturers that still will make and produce diesel products. But, you know, last year we were just over 100,000. This year we're predicting a drop again. And, I mean, 3% in the market by 2027 is going to be about 60, 65,000 registrations. Google rounded out the day with a presentation on its new vehicle ads product. But the firm's Mohammed Lone had some concerns too. And the one thing I want to just finally touch upon for this question is, it concerns me in a way. I feel like young people are falling out of love with cars. And as someone who, as a kid, you know, was obsessed with cars of all types, from vans to supercars, I find that there is more effort and more uh, deliberate work needed by brands, whether it's dealers or whether it's OEMs, to connect to those younger audiences. If you miss Cardi Alive, you can watch back all the sessions with a replay ticket. All of the day's panels are available on video and you can watch them now at cardialive.co.uk. Our event for the motor trade will be back next year and full details will be announced in the coming weeks on that same website.